Hello, and welcome to the session that will close our meetings today. This is a session to honor the memory of Pat Atherton, our friend and our colleague who provided an immense contribution to the support unit and to other health-related activities in BC throughout her career. Sadly, she passed away last August. I'm Noreen Frisch, a nursing professor who was based at UVic until a couple of years ago when I retired from academia and then worked alongside Pat, supporting her in the training and capacity development. In this session, I will make a few comments I'm pausing because I'm hearing myself after I'm speaking. So I'm going to turn my sound down. Can you all still hear me? Okay, then that's the way this should work. Um, like I said, I will make a few comments about Pat and her contributions, and we will hear from three others who will reflect on her work and her legacy in patient-oriented research. These individuals are Diane Obe from Alberta, Sterling Bryan and Kent Lofsgaard, who you've already met earlier today. I will also tell you a bit more later about an award and its first recipients that we've established in Pat's honor to acknowledge her and the important work that she cherished. I would like to mention that Pat's husband, Peter Eberhardt, and her sister, Deb Gold, are with us, as well as some other members of her family. I understand that within her family, Pat was very humble about the impact and significance of all her work. So we are very pleased that you are able to join us and you, we can include you in our tribute to Pat. For those in the audience, you can use the Q&A function to provide comments as we proceed. I will provide just some brief reflections of Pat of, that were my own. I worked with her for over 10 years, predating the support unit and our efforts toward patient-oriented research. Pat was uniquely able to situate herself in projects that were innovative, moving everybody around her to think in new ways as we charged forward with uncertainty. She had a vision and she had enthusiasm. She had an uncanny ability to make order out of chaos and to move when we were moving forward with uncertainty. When I reflect on Pat's work, I think most of the technological savvy that she had and how she helped moving us, even in a pre-COVID lockdown condition, to using technology where we developed virtual work electronic communities of practice and social and professional networks. She knew that given our diverse and expansive geography, we would have to connect with what others in ways that didn't take hours of travel and that we could connect with people within our province and beyond and that the impact would go further. I often have thought over the past year, thank goodness we learned this from Pat before we were faced with the impact of the pandemic. But that was Pat. She was visionary, and she also had a quality of being a hard worker to implement her vision and to bring all of us along with her. She was, of course, compassionate and kind. And that's, I think, what we all remember. At this point, I would like to turn the stage over to Diane, who can speak about Pat's work that extended well beyond British Columbia. Thank you, Noreen. Yes, I'm Diane Obey, and I worked with Pat uh, at the national level uh, on capacity development projects. So I, I got to know her uh, probably six years ago now. 
But I have to say, I feel like a bit of a fraud today because I really only know the two dimensional path. By this, I mean, I only met her in person probably two or three times because like Noreen said, you know, we had Zoom long before the pandemic because of Pat. So I only met her two or three times in person, but I got to know her and got to appreciate her and become friends with her through our, our many video calls over several years of working together on, on national spore projects. And sometimes these Zoom calls were about work. We laugh and roll our eyes and finally work out whatever we were working on, but mostly they were about our, our lives and the sometimes funny and sometimes sad, sometimes crazy stories she would tell. I, I loved her stories and, and really miss them so much. And I never imagined I could get close to someone on Zoom, but I did, but really Zoom? Um, so when I found out about Pat's death after the shock and the immediate grief, I wanted to reach out to someone um, who knew her like I did, but I knew nobody that she knew because I only, like I said, I only knew her um, at, at this two dimensional level. I knew about her past, her passions, a little bit about her family and her Peter, but otherwise I, I didn't know anybody in her circle, friends and family. So what a privilege and honor it is today to be able to share my thoughts about Pat, especially with Peter and Deb uh, and other families who are here today. Um, I really feel honored that, that I can do this and all of her friends and colleagues who know exactly why it's important to celebrate Pat Atherton. As a colleague, <clears throat> I admired Pat for her tenacity, her insight and her cleverness. She also had, as Noreen said, I'm gonna repeat this, a natural ability to connect people and to bring a project together and find solutions for challenges that come with the work we do. Because it is, patient-oriented research is, is challenging. It's, there are a lot of challenges to get through when you're bringing this kind of research uh, to the forefront. As a friend, I admired Pat for her kindness, her generosity of spirit, and her humility. And she was genuinely humble. Those of you who know her know that she would think that we're making way too big a deal of her uh, with this award. But I think if she knew how much it helped us in our own grief and helped, helped us remember her and smile, I'd like to think she'd be okay with this. And, and making a big deal of her in, and remembering her in this way. So I want to thank the BC Spore Support Unit for, for honoring Pat with this award in her name and for giving me the honor of speaking about her today and sharing my thoughts through, of course, well, through Zoom. So thank you. Uh, next, I think, is Sterling. Uh, yeah. I'll give you the floor. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Noreen. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, this is going to be emotional. Um, Pat was a colleague and a friend, and a real true friend. Um, the phrase that always rings in my mind is, you rock, and she said it to me, and I thought I was the only one she said it to, and now I know she said it to so, so many people. She was a true friend to everyone at the support unit. She was the conference champion for putting patients first. She oversaw every single conference we've had, including this one, and I'm sure that she's overseeing this one too. She gave me the courage to wear a tie that I thought I would never wear. I wore this tie, and the first person I met when I wore this tie was Pat. And I was thinking like, I'm gonna take this tie off. And she said, it's perfect, Sterling, it's perfect for today. Please wear this tie. So, uh, so I thank her for, for, for the sartorial advice that I got from Patch. I wanna take you back to June, 2016. Day one for me as scientific director at the BC Support Unit. Pat was the very, very first person I met and I got such a warm welcome. I'd never met Pat before. And I got such a warm welcome. It was, it was uh, just so memorable. She was an enthusiast for patient-oriented research, and she generated the excitement in the support unit uh, that, that the support unit was launching. She was a key part of it. She gave us that excitement for the and the vision of what we were going to embark upon 
and what we've achieved, she's got to take a lot of credit for. Um, she introduced me to indigenous cultural safety. That was a passion for her as well. Uh, I took the sannyas training on the advice of Pat. And in fact, it was the encouragement of Pat. She gave me reading uh, on indigenous cultural safety. And I, I, I am truly grateful for the learning that I had as a result of, of that. She was a, a staunch supporter of our journal club within the support unit. Uh, I am a staunch supporter of our journal club, and I really thank Pat for making that a priority. And I think it reflected her desire for, for, for ongoing learning. She was someone who had, was passionate about making sure we try to improve and we learn from what others have done. I miss you dearly. Thank you for everything you've done for us, Pat. Okay, over to you, Ken. Thank you, Sterling. My goodness, how do I follow that? Let me give it a shot as I'm here surrounded by several of our off-camera colleagues who uh, are just so uh, reminiscently <laughs> crying into their bits of tissue <laughs> that we happen to have conveniently on hand for just this uh, special occasion. I would say that uh, my favorite thing about Pat, who I had the distinct pleasure of working with in multiple capacities uh, since the summer of 2016, when I first came into the orbit of the support unit, um, the favorite thing about Pat, besides her disarmingly interpersonal nature and good humor was the fact that when she met me and came to know me as someone who, although I was born a patient, you know, professionally, academically, I have a, you know, capacities and strengths that sort of span the spectrum of stakeholders that uh, patient-oriented research engages. And as the practice of patient engagement has evolved, I've noticed that in some circles, mostly outside of the CIHR universe, uh, can find that a little bit strange because they presume that the patient's perspective is always supposed to be a person's perspective. In my case, I would have to go back to the womb to return to a layperson's perspective. <laughs> and I appreciated so much that Pat saw my capabilities and capacities in health specialty communications, team-based care, various different kinds of research, curriculum development and delivery, et cetera, et cetera, as strengths and assets that she did not hesitate to take proper advantage of rather than weaknesses. And I'll always be thankful for that. And I think that the legacy in the work that we do that I carry forward from Pat's inspiration is just the commitment to quality and advancing the ideals of patient-oriented research. Now I want to hear about our award recipients, so I'm going to keep it short. Doreen. Okay. Well, I thank you for your comments. And it's clear that Pat has affected all of us deeply. And she spent, I believe, her entire career from when she started working in continuing education at the medical school to the Inspire Net Network to everything that she did, that she was committed to people learning and developing themselves both personally and professionally. And she did everything she could to help people be successful. So at the unit, we thought the best way we could honor Pat was to establish an ongoing award in her name. And we did. The award is the Pat Atherton 
Emerging Scholars Award for patient-oriented research. And today we will be giving that award for the first time, but we will give it annually at our other conferences in recognition that Pat was the person behind all of our conferences. I have the privilege of announcing the first award recipients. To be eligible for the award, individuals must be trainees. That means they are in a traineeship, a fellowship, graduate school, or they're working with a mentor to learn and conduct patient-oriented research. They have to be presenting work at this year's conference. We had very excellent candidates and our reviewers commented on the high quality of what we've seen from our trainees. But we have selected two awardees, one who presented a poster session and the other who provided an oral presentation at these meetings. So I'm happy to announce the poster award goes to the Kid League Project, Kid League Project. That's patient-centered development of social robotics for children and youth living with anxiety. The presenter is Jill Dasso de Silva. She's a postdoc at BC Children's, who is also affiliated with the Neuroscience Engagement and Smart Tech Lab at UBC Neurology. Congratulations to Jill. The Oral Presentation Award goes to the Quisni Project, Change, Studying Community-Driven Interventions to Support Emergency Care in Remote Indigenous Communities. The presenter is Megan Muller, a postdoc fellow from UBC. Congratulations to Megan. Note that these awards come with an honorarium that goes directly to the recipient. We are just so pleased that we can carry on this work and the quality of what we're seeing is tremendous and something I think none of us would have expected that we would be here five years ago when we started this work. So now we are at the close of our first conference day. I noted that this morning we were called by our elders to embrace respect and compassion as we connect and learn. And from our speakers today, I believe we've learned a number of things, that our work is life-changing and it promotes both professional and personal growth. There are many models of how to enact patient engagement and patient-oriented research. We need to design and deliver care that is appropriate for our diverse communities, and we're able to do that. Now we have a better understanding of how patient and community partners can work with health scientists and clinicians and others for research and healthcare delivery. I think we've embraced collaboration and partnerships in ways that we probably couldn't imagine five years ago. So we've come a long way. So as we complete today, which is our day of considering the themes of listening and learning, we have much to think about tonight as we wait to connect again tomorrow morning, where we'll be focusing on collaborating and changing. With this now, I'll turn over to Danielle, who has some things uh, to tell us, I think, before we begin again tomorrow. And I will mention that any of the comments that have been posted, we will be able to collect and perhaps keep for our memory of Pat. <laughs> caught me off guard, Nadine. <laughs> but fortunately, I'm behind Kent, so I can uh, welcome myself to the stage uh, unexpectedly. Um, I just want to thank each of you um, for honoring Pat. Um, I am so pleased that we were able to come together today, and I'm actually in the room with many of her close colleagues. There really wasn't a dry eye in this room, and um, we miss her dearly, and this has been um, quite an event today just to see all of the phenomenal work and know that she is indeed um, smiling down on us. Um, I want to thank everybody who spent the day with us. Uh, we have an exciting day yet uh, to come tomorrow, uh, starting with our first keynote uh, session that Sterling will actually be welcoming us to, I think, uh, starting at 8.30 tomorrow morning. Um, I know there's been a lot of chatter on Twitter, so uh, Sterling, hopefully we're hitting your goals of, of setting a good trend this year. Um, and many thanks for all the engagement that's happened both on the, the platform as well as 
um, in social media as well. It's been a wonderful day. I hope everyone is able to go outside, stretch, um, and, uh, and restore so we can enjoy another fantastic conference day tomorrow. Thanks to everyone, and I wish everyone a great afternoon.